what we're going to go through, I'm going to show you um, one of my favorite speeches by Warren Buffett. And the reason uh, this is my favorite speech by him is because of what he talks about. He doesn't talk about investing or the analysis or any of that side of things. What he talks about is the mindset and how this is truly the most powerful uh, weapon you have and the really the key to success. You know, he starts it off by talking about you, you know, what he looks for when he hires people. He looks for three things, IQ, energy, and integrity. But he says the, you know, the, the first two are guaranteed, but you should never hire someone unless they have that third thing. And that is that integrity, it is that mindset, and that, that drive, that extra drive, you know. Because, you know, and he was talking at, you know, a university where everyone's going to get a degree. You're going to have to work hard if you want to be successful. But what truly sets out, you know, someone who's here, and the, the very, very best is having that integrity, having that mindset. And that is exactly what Warren Buffett talks about in this speech and, you know, what he looks for, the specific traits. And I think this is important going forward is if you want to become like Warren Buffett, if you want to mimic his success and other successful people, it's best to understand what they look for, understand what they do, and then start mimicking their very traits and this is some, something he goes on about uh, throughout this speech. I'd like to talk for just one minute up to the students about your, about your future when you leave here because there's, you're going to learn a tremendous amount about investments uh, and you'll learn, you'll learn enough to do well. You've, you've all got the IQ to do well. You've all got the initiative and energy to do well or you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be here. Uh, and most of you will succeed in, 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 in meeting your aspirations. Uh, but... In, in determining whether you succeed, uh, there's more to it than intellect and energy. And I'd like to talk for just a second about that. In fact, uh, there was a fellow that Pete Kiewit in Omaha used to say that he looked for three things in hiring people. He looked for integrity, intelligence, and energy. And he said if, it, if that person didn't have the first two, that the latter two would kill him. Because if they don't have integrity, you want them dumb and lazy. <laughs> you don't want them smart and energetic. Uh, <laughs> And I, I really like to talk about that first one because we, we know you've got the second two. And, and I, to play along with me in a little game for just a second uh, in, in, in terms of thinking about that question, uh, you've all been here, I, I guess, almost all of your second year MBAs and you've got to know your classmates. And, think and that's really the basis of this whole speech and what makes it so great. It's about having that integrity and that, how that really determines those who are successful and those who are not. You know, he says, you know, everyone's got, everyone has the ability to, you know, pick up, uh, you know, a book on investing, study, learn, everyone has the ability to work, you know, really, really hard. Everyone has that. But it's that that integrity um, that really sets apart, you know, the, the 1% and the, makes the difference between those who succeed and those who don't. I think for a moment that I granted you the right to buy 10% of one of your classmates for the rest of his or her lifetime. Um, now, you can't pick one with a rich father. That doesn't count. I mean, you've got to, uh, you've got to pick, them, uh, pick somebody who's going to do it on their own merit. And, and I gave you an hour to think about it. Which one are you going to pick among all your classmates as for the one you want to own 10% of? I think this is a really, uh, really important uh, point and almost a game you can play. You can think, right, if you were to put you know, all your wealth into you know, one of your friends or one of your classmates, um, who would you pick? And then, obviously, why would you pick that certain person? What specific characteristics does that person hold that you would entrust all your money and your earnings into that specific person? The rest of their lifetime. Uh, are you going to give them an IQ test? Pick the one with the highest IQ? I doubt it. Are you going to pick the one with the best grades? Uh, I doubt it. Uh, you're not even going to pick the most energetic one, necessarily. You're the one with displays the most initiative but you're going to start looking for qualitative factors in addition because everybody's got enough right i think that's so important you know if you think of right you you want to pick the person you think is going to be the most successful what are the why why do you pick that certain person and you're right it's probably not going to be the the nerd who sits at the front row and gets the highest grade it's probably not going to be the person who has the most energy or reads the most books or any of those factors it's going to be something else, something more more about their character and their, their integrity and their personality that really is going to define them and push them on. Right here and, and, and enough energy. And I would say that if you thought about it for an hour, decided who you're going to place that bet on, you'd probably pick 
the one who you responded the best to, because uh, the one that was going to have the leadership qualities, the ones who were going to be able to get other people to carry out uh, their interests. And that would be the person who was generous and honest and who gave credit to other people even if, for their own ideas, all kinds of qualities like that. And you could write down those qualities that you admire in this other person, whoever you admire most in the class. And then I would throw in a hooker. I would say as part of owing 10% of this person, you had to agree to go short 10% of somebody else in the class. Uh, that's more fun, isn't it? <laughs> and you think, well, now who do I want to go short of? And uh, uh, again, you wouldn't pick the person with the lowest IQ or the... Or, uh, you, you, would, you would start thinking about the person really who turned you off for one reason or another. I mean, they had very, various qualities, quite apart from their academic achievement. But they had various qualities. In the end, you shouldn't really want to be around them. And other people didn't want to be around them. And what were the qualities that lead to that? Well, there'd be a whole bunch of things. You know, but it's the person who's egotistical, the person who's greedy, the person who slightly dishonest, cuts corners, all of these qualities. And you can write those down on the right-hand side of the page. And when you look at that, we'll just, I don't know which one I'm using. Can you hear me okay with this? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. What do I do with it? Well, those are important. And I think you should, you know, get a piece of paper, write down, you know, who you would put your all your wealth in and who you would you would definitely not. And, you know, what are their characteristics? What are their personalities? Write down. And then you have one, ones you should aspire towards and then ones you should try and avoid with everything you do. You know, when I think about my friends, you know, I think of, you know, there's someone who uh, goes above and beyond, you know, is always there for you, goes above and beyond, will, you know, put in all the work and effort you require, but does it with ease, you know, is, is grateful, always uh, helps pay for stuff, um, is generous. Those are the specific qualities of someone I go, yeah, they're going to do really, really well in life. And, you know, those are qualities that you can aim for yourself. And then you think of other qualities and then you just try and avoid those. And I think that's an important life tip. And that's really, you know, on the having the mindset to go, right, who do I want to aspire to be like? Who do I think is going to be successful? OK, and what are their qualities? You know, what are the qualities of someone like Warren Buffett? What are the qualities, maybe someone in your classmate or your friendship group who you really want to aspire to be? And then just go and follow, uh, write down what those qualities are and then follow them. And, you know, soon you'll become, you'll become that person. It just came loose. Oh, it just came loose. Okay. You can see why I avoid technology. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> chewing gum is about as far as I get. Uh, as you looked at those qualities on the left and right hand side, there's one interesting thing about them. It's not the ability to throw a football 60 yards. Uh, it's, not, it's not the ability to run the 100-yard dash in 9-3. It's not being the best-looking person in the class. They're all qualities that if you really want to have the ones on the left-hand side, you can have them. I mean, they are, they're qualities of behavior, temperament, character that, that are achievable. They're not forbidden to anybody in this group. And if you look at the qualities on the right-hand side, the ones that you find turn you off in other people, there's not, a, there's not a quality there that you have to have. If you have it, you can, you can, you can, you can get rid of it. And that's, imp you know, another important point. You know, these, all the qualities you aspire to be, you can get. If you have the right mindset and you truly believe and you really aspire to be that certain someone, um, you know, you can be that person. It's all about having the right mindset, that drive to have those qualities and to avoid those other qualities. And those are definitely things that are achievable for everyone. And you can get rid of a lot easier at your age than you can at my age because uh, most behavior is, is, is habitual. And... They say the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. And, and that, that quote there, the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken, is a really important thing. And, you know, I've got a book uh, called Atomic Habits, and that goes into that very aspect of how important habits are in establishing good habits. Because once you establish good habits, then it's just something that you do and it, you do over and over again. And it becomes part of your habit. And that can be both an upward spiral or a downward spiral. You know, if you build bad habits and you continue to do them, then, you know, that's going to be a downward spiral. But if you have those positive upward spirals, you have, you know, a good, the good work ethic. You, you do everything right. You work hard. You work out. You put everything into it. You build those habits ta over days and days and days and weeks and then years. Eventually, that becomes who you are. And those habits define um, you as a person. And there's no question about it. I see people with these self-destructive behavior patterns at my age or even 10 or 20 years younger, and they really are entrapped by them. They, they go around and they do things that turn off other people uh, right and left. And uh, uh, 
uh, they don't need to be that way, but by a certain point they get so they can hardly change it. But at your age, you can have any, any, any habits, any, any patterns of behavior. And I completely agree there. You know, at, at my age or whatever your age is, you can, you can have any habit you want and you can become any person you want to, so long as you have the integrity and the mindset and that determination to go out and achieve those things. That you wish. It's simply a question of which you decide. And why not decide the ones that, I mean, if you like, uh, Ben Graham did this, and Ben Franklin did it before him, but Ben, ben Graham in his, low, in his low teens looked around and he looked at the people he admired and he said, you know, I want to be admired, so why don't I just behave like them? And he found there was nothing impossible about behaving like them. And that's another great point. Um, you know, just find people you aspire to be, find what their characteristics are, their traits. You know, you can read, you know, if you think Jeff Bezos is, you know, incredible, I'm reading a book on him right now. Um, you know, what are his, he has, you know, at Amazon, he has 14 leadership traits. What are those traits? Okay, how can I put myself in a position where I'm also um, mimicking those 14 leadership traits of that Jeff Bezos has and at Amazon? You know, research these things, find out what the characteristics are, and then become that person and go out and achieve those things. And similarly, he, he did the same thing on, on the reverse side in terms of getting rid of those qualities. So I would suggest that if you write those qualities down and think about them a little while and make them habitual, you will be the one that you want to buy 10% of when you get all through. And the beauty of it is you already own 100% and you're stuck with it. So you might as, you might as well be that person as uh, somebody else. Well, that's... And I think that's a, you know, a point I always think about. Ultimately, you know, he, he sees, you know, when he buys a stock, he sees it as buying a full business and buying, you know, the full business, 10% of a business. Well, you should see yourself as that business and think, right, how can I better myself how can I improve my myself as a business? How can I get 1% stronger, 1% fitter, 1% healthier? You know, improve my sleep by 1%. Improve my, you know, my ability, my, all the other characteristics, your integrity, your, your habits. How can you improve those? And that's only going to be to the benefit of your, your own business or your life as a whole. That's a short little sermon. So let's get on to what, uh, what you're interested in. And, uh, and uh, yeah, obviously, that's uh, just the first uh, snippet. This is, um, for those who want to watch it, it is the University of Florida interview. And I think 1998, you can tell by the quality. Um, but, you know, that's that's that first clip about integrity and honesty is really what I wanted to go over uh, with um, you all, because I think it's so important about having that mindset and, you know, go ahead and, you know, write down the characteristics of people you admire, you know, get a pad, get some paper, write down on one side the characteristics and the people you aspire to be, what their characteristics are, their leadership style, you know, their generosity or their honesty, their work ethic, all the things you aspire about. And then on the opposite side, you know, characteristics and traits you want to avoid. And then focus, you know, focus your mind on going out and achieving those things, achieving those characteristics. And once you do that, once you go out and achieve those characteristics, you know, you're going to be the person you aspire to be. And that all comes from having the mindset, not because of either your IQ or your t grades or, you know, your sporting ability or any of that. It all comes down to the mindset and having that winner's mindset and that, that drive and that belief that you can go out and achieve whatever you want in life. And I truly believe that you can do that. I truly believe um, with the right mindset, you can achieve anything in life. You know, you can aspire to be whoever you want. You can build those habits. And ultimately, that is going to be to the benefit of yourself. Um, so, yeah, feel free to watch the full uh, Warren Buffett clip or interview if you want. But for me, that first five, ten minutes is uh, really, really important in understanding the mindset and what separates the most successful people in the world from those who are not. And I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, subscribe and enjoy your day.